Hello, everybody, and welcome to School Matters. I'm David Mustanen, Director of Communications for the Dearborn Public Schools. Thank you for taking some time to join us today on our uh, podcast here as we talk about a variety of subjects that focus in on all the different areas in the Dearborn Public Schools. Uh, I am very, very pleased to uh, have two very special guests joining us today. Uh, they are from our Adult and Community Education Program, Miss Iana Garrisi and uh, Miss Miriam Gaith. There you go. See, I got that right. See, I told you, I, I, I always ask in advance, but I it always... Right when I have to say it, then I get that mental block going. So, okay, great. Uh, thank you very much, ladies, for joining us here today. Uh, we in Dearborn have had a, a long-standing adult and community education program in our district for many, many years, and it's one of the bigger programs in the state of Michigan, if not the biggest. So, uh, first, I, so you know, I'll just kind of start with you. Um, if you'd like to give a you know, give us a little background, tell our guests a little bit about you and, and your involvement here and how long you've been with Dearborn and, and, and let's just start off that with okay. that way. I've been with Dearborn, David, um, and I'm a very, very grateful and very lucky to be a part of the Dearborn Public Schools uh, for over 28 years. I started out as an ESL teacher um, at uh, at that time, adult ed was uh, running classes out of Axis uh, in the uh, southwest part of Dearborn. So I taught there, and um, soon thereafter, I was uh, I applied to be the uh, school to work supervisor at the school to work academy, which was on Miller and uh, Miller and Schaefer. No, not Miller and um, Warren on the okay. corner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, after that, I uh, applied to be the community ed supervisor, and I, I worked with uh, adult ed as part of the, the team. We were uh, adult ed, community ed, and child care, all one department. So I've been with adult ed for uh, over 25 years. Um, currently, we are the biggest in the, in the state. We are not one of the biggest. We are the biggest. Uh, we enroll in, in adult ed over 1,800 students pre-COVID, pre-pandemic. Wow. Wow. Um, our numbers That's went great. down a little bit, of course. But now we are looking, uh, we're, we're steadily going up. This year, uh, we are looking at over 1,200 students already enrolled. So wow. there's a need. There's yeah. a need in our community. That's great. That's great. And that's great to hear. We're, we, we're the biggest program and great yeah. to hear we're servicing that many, that many students. Miriam, what about yourself? Uh, how long have you been dear with Dearborn and, and what is your role with our adult ed program? Yeah, so I joined the team in uh, 2018. I started okay. as one of the ELT teachers. Um, from there, I became one of the GED teachers. And then I applied for college and career navigator, which is where I'm at right now. So. Great, great. And we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about that in just a moment. I just want to kind of, you know, sometimes people get a little bit confused, you know, adult and community ed, it's always kind of linked together, uh, but they're two very separate programs serving very different audiences. EO, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what is that difference between adult ed and community ed? Very good. Yes, there's, there's a quite noticeable difference. Community ed is um, classes that are for enrichment, classes that are uh, they're, they're for tuition. They, you, we charge a tuition for them. They're fun classes. They're, uh, you know, exercise yoga. classes, yoga. yoga. Uh, uh, I, I love the one. I, I, it's this uh, one where they have these this big, huge, inflatable ball, and they're drumming. Drumming Cardio on drumming. It. Cardio yes. drumming, yes. Uh, and, of course, <laughs> they're, they're, we offer that throughout the district, different schools. Um and it draws on, on, on different parts of or different citizens of the community, uh, people who want to exercise, people who want to learn how to paint, people who we have a, a Spanish class, a class and an Arabic class and uh, for language. We have a woodworking class. We have a furniture refinishing class. Those are all hobbies and things that we offer the community, and uh, we do them uh, because the teachers in community ed uh, have a passion for what they do. They are not really in it to make money. They're in it to share their passion with community members. So we can offer them at a, at a very affordable price. And people attend our classes and, and, and 
love coming to the schools. And it's a great way for people who would never otherwise walk into a school come in and use our facilities by taking a class. So that's community ed. Adult ed is, is totally different. Adult ed is basically ESL classes, GED uh, classes, high school completion, and citizenship. So this is reaching out to the, the, the uh, community members who need to learn English or need to get their GED. Now, adult ed students may take community ed classes too. <laughs> we interwine right. and vice versa. But uh, basically, these programs are state and federal funded. Uh, we apply for grants uh, for these programs, and we sustain the programs by uh, funding from the federal government and the state. Uh, the students come, uh, and, and they only pay like a $20 registration fee, uh, and they get the, 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 the books, the materials, uh, supplies, and of course, uh, the instruction. So that's and this, our adult ed. And so the adult ed program is the one that we have about a 1,200 student enrollment currently Correct. in that program. So that's great. Citizenship, where does that, that, that's a program, where does that fall? Adult ed, community ed? Adult ed. That's that adult, adult ed. ed. So it that's another funded. program mm -hmm. that is part of that. Right. All right. So Miriam, uh, I know you're involved more with that adult ed component yes. of it all. So explain a little bit about what you do and in, in, in how that helps our students who are in those programs. Yeah, so I work closely with our students who are in our GED classes, um, those finishing up their GED, looking to enroll in a post-secondary institution or trade school, um, helping them apply, helping them search for specific programs that they have in mind. Um, so I work with them in that capacity. Um, I also work with our students to uh, help show them or bring them opportunities that are available that they may not otherwise know about. Um, college and career fairs, or even our class, we offer a CTE class to them where they can get allied health um, training, basically. Um, that'll help them if they're going into the health field. So any opportunities we can, we can offer to our GED students just to kind of uh, give, them, um, give them a chance to build on skills before they even leave our program. Now, that sounds like something that obviously is a great service to our students. Do all adult ed programs offer that kind of extra support that you're offering, or is this kind of unique to us? Uh, I wouldn't say unique. I think depending on the programs, they offer different CTE training classes. Okay. Um, the need for us, we saw, was really in the health field. A lot of people were interested in going into that, and so we wanted to make sure that they had um, sort of the skills that they would need maybe as uh, we tell them it's our it's a great uh, first 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 class to take before going into college even if they're if they're considering anything in the health field do and you do you find a lot of your students after they get their GED do you see a lot of them going on to maybe a two-year university or a four-year or other types of specialty training they do a lot awesome. of them do apply um, to like the local colleges or even universities that they're interested in, yeah. We, you know, David, we like to have like a really hands-on approach. And, and yeah. our, our, our community is, is unique in many ways. It's different than Troy. It's different than Novi. I mean, they have large programs, two adult ed programs. Uh, but we were very cognizant of our community and their needs. And... For example, when Miriam works with students and they have a college and career fair, we tell the students about the college and career fair, but we don't just say, just go, go. Uh, for example, tonight there's a, a career fair at Edsel. Miriam and Ramsey, uh, our assistant supervisor, will be there, will go, so that way they can help the students navigate that. Some of our students they've never been to a career right. fair or sure. college fair. They they don't know what it's about. They don't know what to expect. So we always make sure that our students are supported in, in what maybe sometimes we take for granted, you know, something right. where they need support. Uh, some of them have done it. That's fine. But the ones that have never been to a fair, Miriam will be there, Ramsey will be there and say, hey, you know what, you're interested in this kind of field? Let's go talk to this school. Let's go here. They, we navigate. We help them navigate. So um, 
how much other districts are doing that or other adult ed providers, I can't say. But we know what our needs are and we make sure that they're addressed, you know, as best as possible. Well, that's a great level of service right. Right. to the students in, in that program. So thank you, ma'am. That's, that's you. awesome that you're able to do that uh, and get those students to that next level. It's and help them. rewarding, i got to say. I'm sure it yeah. is. I'm sure it is. That's got to be kind of special when you see those students who maybe they, they come to you, they start the program, um, maybe having, growth. yeah, and no direction or, or just not sure where to go. And as they work their way through that program, through your working with them and through the staff members working with them, uh, at the end, it's got to be a pretty rewarding experience, right? Definitely. And, and remember, David, too, that some of our students um, need help also. They come from overseas and they have degrees. And they come to us because they need the language. But then they don't know how to go about making sure that that degree is is translated is evaluated, evaluated mm -hmm. is so Miriam would help those students too it's not just you know the basic it's even people with degrees so it's uh, we have a wide variety of students and wide variety of services we provide and and we work also closely with access we work closely with SEMCA um, Southeast Michigan something Alliance. Um, <laughs> I forget. Uh, but we work with them. We partner with them, too, that if students need, uh, you know, and we always say we're not a job placement agency. Right. But if a student is in need of a job, we will make sure we connect them with the right person, whether it's through Access, whether it's SEMCA, whether it's maybe some connections we do have with some organizations. So. Right. Uh, we try to be a little bit of everything to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's probably why you have 1,200 students enrolled and you guys are, are so successful at what you do is by providing that extra level of support. Um, mm -hmm. And I think people appreciate that and appreciate the work that you do. I know we definitely appreciate the work that you guys are doing over there. Well, thank, thank you. Um, so looking at maybe... Um, the future of adult and community education. Um, um, let's, you know, we can focus on both. We can talk about both, but um, it may be one area over another. Uh, uh, do we see this as a area that's, that's going to grow? Do we see there's going to be a greater needs in the future moving forward? Uh, and what does that look like for us here in Dearborn? Does that mean maybe uh, looking at uh, more, more space. I know we're in our schools um, right now, um, so the community ed programs are run in our schools, after school, adult ed uh, is also in our buildings. But what does that future look like for, for both of these programs? Either of you maybe want to share what you may think. Um, well, we probably, I mean, of course we want to grow. We want to continue uh, servicing the community as best as possible. Uh, the barriers we are finding right now is space and uh, staffing, like almost everybody in the world. <laughs> uh, for us, I mean, there is a need right now. We could offer more classes if we had more space, if we could find teachers easily. Uh, it's, it's hard to find teachers. Uh, we we uh, hire certified teachers for adult ed. So uh, it, they have to be certified um, by Michigan. They can't have like a TESOL certification. Um, so, yeah, we'd like to grow, but it's, it's a little hard. We have been approached by a couple of uh, organizations and uh, entities in Dearborn and been asked to go and offer classes there. And we can do that, of course, but uh, we already are, are offering classes at one mosque and in another cultural center, Ben Jabel. Um, but we pay rent, and, and that's fine, but we can't, like, pay rent at 10 different places. So, yeah, space is an issue, and then, of course, finding teachers. That's a, it's always a, an issue, and, and making sure that we uh, can fund these teachers or the amount of students, or excuse me, amount of classes we offer. Uh, so, yes, we want to grow, but there's there's areas where we would, you know. And, and But the district is great. Uh uh, we've always had great support from Dr. Maleko and from the Board of Education and been uh, uh, given rooms or, or allowed to use rooms uh, as much as possible. We have currently five rooms, five or six, five rooms uh, at the Berry Center that we use during the day. We have three rooms that we use at Salina during the day. 
Uh, and if there are any rooms available in our other district and uh, other schools in the district, we're always uh, welcome to use them. But as you well know, rooms are very <laughs> yeah very space far at a few. premium yeah right. So I mean that's that's it in a in a long yeah. you know short yeah. form. Um, community ed is is uh, I think community ed is kind of hurting throughout the whole state. It's not just our community ed. We are finding challenges. Uh, um, people are starting to, to branch out a little bit, but we're trying to find new innovative and, and, and exciting programs to offer. So uh, we are continued, we're continuing to keep that program alive um, and offer classes that are of interest. Uh, we're just going to offer a bagpipe class. Is that nice. something you wanted to learn? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, let me think about that. I, I'm sure my wife would love me uh, practicing around the house yeah. uh, uh, on the bagpipes. Right. Yes, yeah, I'm sure she'd like that. Um, <laughs> but interesting. I like it. I like the variety. I, I think that um, really the adult ed program and the community ed program uh, is – kind of reinforces that mission of the district that that we are a you know we are a p14 district uh but but we're really here to meet the needs of of all of our community uh no matter the age and no matter what those needs may be uh i touched on it a little bit and, and i've i've seen so many great pictures uh of your citizenship class um I think that is awesome when you you post some pictures of somebody who just passed the test and they're so proud uh, to to uh, you know reach that goal, and uh, I think that that's always a great great program as well that I know you guys offer. We had a family of was it five? It was a father and a, and four of his children, right. uh, and they've been attending classes ESL and citizenship, GED as well, and GED as well. And I'll never forget this. This is the things that you take with you, like you know, and you remember, and you're like, okay, I love what I do. I was in the hallway, and I don't remember the gentleman's name. Do you know the gentleman's name? The father? Yeah. Yeah, Ibrahim. Ibrahim. He, he was wearing a suit, and he was walking down the hall. He was coming in, and he was carrying a tray of sweets, because that's what we do when we, <laughs> when, we, when we become citizens. We bring in, and we it's treat us. Nice. And he's nice. walking in, and the smile and the pep in his walk. And he was walking towards me, and he's like, I passed, I passed, I passed. And I was like... Those are the things you remember, and, and they're so excited, and, and they motivate us. You know, they keep us going, and they motivate us. Um, and then his other three children passed too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and they, their motivation to even their classmates in the GED class as well. So right. You find them even giving the students advice on what to do really? and how to approach, you know, an exam. Yeah. So they're Yeah, and they've only been wonderful. in the country for, what, maybe four or five years, I think? A said? little bit more. Yeah. A little yeah. bit more, but they work so hard. That yeah. is great. And it's, yeah inspirational yeah it is it is yeah. and it is that uh that uh, that american dream right and here it is alive and well right here in, right. in dearborn michigan yeah right <laughs> and we have teachers that are so devoted and again actually today we have a, a i don't want to say his name but uh, someone from the um Frank is coming. I just said his name frank is coming <laughs> 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 uh, from not the irs from the um Immigration services. Oh, okay. And he comes in every semester and presents to our students and asks their questions for citizenship. And uh, he spends a good hour and a half with them and, and is... Answering questions. Answering questions. Mm -hmm. And he's loyal. He comes every semester. And even when we were online, he would do it online. So, uh, yeah, we offer, we offer quite a few things to support our students. That's great. That's great. So let's talk now about I want a couple different things. So we talked about, um, you know, staff, um, obviously, like everywhere, looking for staff. Uh, if there are those who may be interested in either doing a community ed class, right, leading a community ed class, you don't need to be a certified teacher to do that. Or if there are some people out there who maybe are looking to be in to teach in the adult ed program, uh, what would be the best way? How can they contact you? How can they reach out to you to to share that they may be interested in doing that? Sure, the best way is to reach me. Um, I'm I'm on our website, uh, Dear, Dearborn uh, website. We are on uh, Facebook. 
Uh, they can reach the main number uh, of adult ed, which is always listed in our brochure, and ask for me. Uh, if they have my email, they can send a, a resume. They can send an idea for the class, for a community class that they have. Um, yeah, we're always open. Okay, great. So that's that aspect of right. it. Now uh, I'm a community member, um, and and if I live maybe in a neighboring community, am I eligible to take part in community ed, adult ed? Is Absolutely. it open to everybody? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. We don't limit it to just Dearborn <laughs> residents. That's okay. For sure. yeah. Okay, that's even better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, so I'm interested in a community ed or an adult ed class. Uh, how do I find out about this? How do I Find out what you're offering. How do I get in touch? Right. We um, publish a brochure three times a year. It comes out in August. It comes out in December. And it comes out again in April. It is mailed to Dearborn and Dearborn Heights residents. Uh, it is distributed at the libraries, at the Civic Center, uh, Performing Arts Center, uh, and here at the, uh, the Administrative Center. Um, so that's like the core where you can find all the information, what community ed classes are being offered, what adult ed classes are being offered, what child care, that's in here also, child care department. Okay. Uh, and then phone numbers and emails are all in that book. Uh, we are on Facebook. Um, and for community ed, we, regist we have three semesters for community ed. We have the fall semester, the winter semester, and the spring semester. Uh, registration for the fall begins like in August. Uh, registration for the winter begins like end of December, right after the holiday. And for the spring, it begins begins in April. Okay. Uh, for adult ed, we have two times to register, uh, fall and winter. And we register students beginning um, mid-August all the way to like early September. Early September. Early September. Mm -hmm. No, more than that, a little a later. Months. Yeah. And then we also register in the uh, winter time too, beginning uh, right when we come back from break, uh, beginning of January, uh, usually to like uh, end of February. No, excuse me. Yeah, end of February because mm -hmm. we start class. Here. No, end, end of, of January. January. End, end of, of January. January. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a long yeah. registration too, so yeah. we because uh, to register that many students, we need to to be there. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's a whole process in itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, Dearborn, DearbornSchools.org, that is our uh, general website. I know if you visit DearbornSchools.org, you can find a link to our adult and community education uh, on that site. So we encourage everybody to do that. Anything else, Miriam, you'd like to add before we wrap things up here? I'd, I'd just <laughs> like to say that um, it's a pleasure to go to work every day and, like I said, work with our adults who want to be there and make a change. It's inspirational even for... For me, and um, I, I just want to say that it is open to, like we said, not just Dearborn residents, but anyone that is interested and in, um, has thought about it, maybe going back to school or maybe learning English. I encourage you, highly encourage you, to give us a call and try us out. I think you, I think they'll be happy. I think Thank I you. think they will be too, Mary. I, I can I know just because I know you guys uh, working with you guys. Um, uh, Anyone involved in that program, I, I think, will have a good experience. We have um, our team, you know, our, our team are all um, people who have dealt with what it's like to be um, an immigrant or not speak the language, whether directly or whether, you know, Miriam, I'm sure her parents, when they, they, they struggled with the language, as did my parents. All of our staff have that, and we recognize that our students, when they come in to our, our facility, are, are looking not just to learn English, but to also to learn how to, 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 to live in this community and find sure. out how, you know, to, to be able to go to a school and communicate with the teacher. Right. Uh, find out some of the, the, the rules, the regulations, the, the cultural differences. Those are all things that we address with our students, whether through lessons or whether through coaching or navigating. Um, and I'm not saying that's, that's unnecessary. You have to know what it's like to be an immigrant, but it just so happens all of our team does. you know. And, and we're very, very sympathetic 
to what our students are facing. And we encourage them to, you know, not be afraid to, to speak, to practice, and don't pay attention if somebody giggles <laughs> or something, <laughs> because that's the biggest fear, you right. know. I mean, I, sure. I, I know it, you know, from my own experience in my own family, it's, it's hard to speak and then somebody giggle or something and then you feel withdrawn. So um, I think that's the part that makes us very successful too, David, is that we all have that, that passion, if you will. And that perspective mm-hmm. that, that you can bring to the table. Yeah. Uh, is it is it that's that's very mm-hmm. very important uh, for those coming into the program. So, well, thank you both for being well, here. This has been uh, yeah, this has been great. Some great information here, and I hope that uh, those listening will be able to uh, you know take you up on your offers and and check out yes. some of these classes, whether it's bagpipes, we got bagpipes. <laughs> yes, or maybe something a little bit more serious like a GED and 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 getting uh, on track for 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 a career. Uh, all, all that whole gambit, I guess, is yeah. there from right. from you guys. So. Well, thank, thank you both you. for being here. I appreciate it very much. And I want to thank everybody who took some uh, time to uh, check us out and, and listen to our podcast. I hope you'll listen to some of our other programs. And to stay tuned because we have lots and lots of more coming uh, in the weeks and months ahead uh, because there is so much great news and so much information to share about this great district, the Dearborn Public Schools. 